Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be doing the best and worst palette challenge. So basically what this is, is I selected from I think 15 different brands and I chose the best and worst palettes from those brands. So if you are interested in seeing what I picked out, then just keep watching. I've really been enjoying these palette challenges and I think you guys have as well. So not only have they been fun for me, I think as a viewer they're very interesting to watch. If there are any cool palette challenges going around on the internet, can you please request them down below so that I can get inspired and see if there's any more challenges that I want to put myself through. For a few of these brands, I have done rankings on them so you already know. But in case you have missed those ranking videos, I will put the brands that I have ranked at the end of this video because I don't want to to be too repetitive. I got inspired to do this video because yesterday while I was doing my makeup, I was watching Karen Harris makeup. She did this and she collaborated with Amy Loves Makeup. I love both of those channels. They cover a lot of indie brand makeup and brands that I'm trying to get into and support more. So I've been watching both of their channels a lot. They know a lot about indie makeup. They have a really fun, colorful makeup looks and tutorials that they do. So I highly recommend you check both of them out. I will link their videos down below in the description box. I'm not sure who created this tag, but those are the videos that inspired me to do this and I love the two of them So I'm very happy to give them a whole shout out in this video because I've been watching them like crazy Especially lately as I've been trying to get into more indie brands This is gonna be in no particular order except for the brands that I've ranked towards the back So we're gonna actually start off with Kaleidos just because it's sitting in front of me I have five of their palettes so I don't have a lot and just so you know the brands that I chose I chose because I had a lot so it was more of a challenge for me if I only had like three from a brand that would be kind of pointless but I do have five from Kaleidos Amy and Karen also did Kaleidos so that's why I'm doing mine so my favorite palette from Kaleidos is the Futurism one sci-fi green I just love green palettes honestly I think Karen picked this one as her first if I remember correctly but this one is just so good I feel like the colors that they chose it just kind of leads you through a look just the way that the palette is curated and laid out if you don't know Kaleidos they are an indie brand but the quality of their shadows are just awesome the formula of their metallics are just so foiled and creamy and beautiful the mattes aren't amazing but they're pretty good and the palettes themselves are quite affordable and of course you know the whole aesthetic and design of the brand is incredible so my favorite from them is the Futurism one sci-fi green my least favorite from Kaleidos and I still like this they don't have a bum palette at all but this is the Futurism 2 Cyber Bronze and again still just as amazing but the reason why it's my least favorite is just because it's not a color story that I go for it's very warm kind of colors and they have such fun bright palettes that this one's almost boring to me from this brand I expect bright colors and I think it's great that they have this neutral one like this neutral palette is still really really good but the color stories that they have are so amazing so if you haven't looked into Kaleidos you need to they are awesome next Next, let's do Too Faced. So my all-time favorite palette from Too Faced is the Chocolate Gold palette. I just love the texture and consistency of their foiled shadows, and this is all beautiful foiled shadows. In here, there's only three mattes, but they're kind of the only mattes that you need. So the idea is you use the mattes to create the base for your look, and then you pop all of these metallics on top. Now, typically, I do prefer a palette that does have more matte, but just the quality of these and the colors in here are so stunning. This is definitely by far one of my favorite Too Faced palettes. I just love it so much. It smells like chocolate. The colors are so gorgeous. It's their best palette. It really is. Now, Too Faced has had a lot of bum palettes. I can't remember specifically what one was that I thought was horrible because they They've had a lot. Typically, I find their holiday palettes to be subpar, not very good, so I've had some bad experiences with those. But just from what I've had in my collection, I actually have a bin in a corner of my room of palettes I'm decluttering. And it came in handy for this video because I pulled out these eyeshadow palettes from their 2D Fruity collection. I don't like these. I don't dislike one more than the other. I just have to show you both. But they're really pretty. This is the Razzle Dazzle Berry. I also have the Sparkling Pineapple. Both very pretty. For me, these formulas were just weird. And I wouldn't necessarily say these are the worst shadows from Too Faced, but as far as what I had to show you and what I remember, these are pretty bad. I just find the shimmers to not stick to the eyelid, the mattes to not be very blendable, and I don't. I just had a really hard time with these. I did not like these. They smell really good, and they're really pretty and super cute, but I did not like these palettes at all, and definitely of what I currently own, these are 
the worst. So next, let's talk about ColourPop. ColourPop was probably the hardest for me out of all of these brands because I don't think I've had a palette from ColourPop yet that I haven't liked. And I have so many ColourPop palettes to begin with, so it was even hard to choose my favorite. But I chose that their best palette was the Going Coconuts palette. Now mine is all mixed matched because all the pans fell out and I didn't know where to put them. But this is one of their best palettes that they've ever come out with. It was between this and the Bare Necessities for me, but I just felt like this one came first and it's more compact and this is like a mini version of the bare necessities and this is such a good neutral palette the colors are beautiful it's such a flattering palette for so many different skin tones and you just can't go wrong with the colors in here you can't go wrong with the quality in here i really think they stepped it up for this palette so this is their best palette in my opinion the worst palette and it's not even a bad palette but i have the femme rosa palette from the karuchi and color pop collaboration this is one of their first palettes I think it was probably their second or third. And it's a really beautiful palette. It's very feminine and like I said, I like it a lot. It's just I find that this palette pulls very, very pink on the eye. What you see in the pans is not really what you get on the eyelid. But here's the thing, I like what shows up on the eyelid. Just because the pans deceive you, I'm putting this as the worst. But deceive is not even the right word. It just pulls pink and that's not a bad thing. So this one I feel like I had to sacrifice for this video, but something about putting it here doesn't feel right because I just don't have a bad ColourPop palette that I've experienced yet. I don't. Let's talk about Lorac. Now, I don't have too many new palettes from Lorac, but I did have quite the collection a few years ago, so I did want to talk about the brand. So I want to talk about the best palette from Lorac, and that is the Unzipped Eyeshadow Palette. This palette is still bomb. I would totally buy a fresh one and put this in my kit because look how pretty the colors are. The quality on this is great. The shimmers are beautiful, and this is just such a universal palette. So many people are, love the shades in here, and I think we've forgotten about this palette, but it truly is such a good, pretty, everyday palette. I need to pull this out and use this because looking at this is exciting me. I really love the colors in here. So this is the best palette from Lorac, and they, they were very popular a few years ago. I think we've forgotten about them, but such a good palette. The worst palette that I've tried from Lorac was the Mega Pro 4. Oh, I struggled with this palette. This was another one that I pulled out of my declutter bin. So this I'm trying to get rid of. And I just found the quality in here to be horrendous. The colors in here are very, very ashy. They're very light. So if you have any sort of color to you, this is just not going to work. And a lot of the shades were so chalky. They blended away. They were just horrible. I don't know what happened to this palette, but I did not like it. It's by far their worst because I feel like in a lot of ways, as far as eyeshadows go, Lorac couldn't go wrong, but they went so wrong with this one. Let's move on to Jeffree Star Cosmetics. So my favorite palette. I was toying between this one and the Jawbreaker, but I ultimately just decided on the Bloodlust palette because purples, you know, 90% of my video, I'm wearing some type of purple makeup, some type of purple top, and I just really fell in love with this palette. I don't think that the formula here is superb. Like, yes, the shadow makes my eye burn, but I really feel so inspired by this palette. I think he really nailed this purple palette as far as putting in colors that complement purple that aren't purple as well so overall for me it's just a really well-rounded purple palette and since I'm such a purple fiend this is his best palette in my opinion now he has a lot of great palettes don't get me wrong and this one is totally a personal decision on my part because not everybody likes purple but he does have a lot of other beautiful palettes but for me this one was his best work his worst work unfortunately and I still like this but I just found it hard to work with and I still managed to make it work because it is such a unique palette and that is blue blood but I really do kind of have to really work to make this work for me there's too many pressed pigments in here they don't blend they're patchy and you have to put a lot of work in to get a really killer look with this palette but that being said this definitely has a soft spot in my heart because it's an all blue palette and no brand has really ever come out with a palette like this you know it was a very brave move on his part and I think color curation wise this is a gorgeous palette and it excites me to use this palette it inspires me to use this palette I don't really dislike any of his palettes is the thing this one is just the worst because I mean it's it's a little bit more difficult
difficult to work with. All right, so let's move on to Morphe. I have a small-ish collection of Morphe palettes. I definitely don't pick up every palette that they come out with, but over the years, I have built a bit of a collection enough to include the brand in this video. So I think that the best palette from Morphe, which should come as no surprise to anybody, is really the original Jaclyn Hill palette. I do enjoy the volume two as well, but color story-wise, this one is so popular for a reason. It has really good colors and the quality is definitely a few notches up from their regular quality. It's good quality, it's a great value, and this palette in particular, I mean the color curation in here really is perfect for the everyday woman. I don't reach for this palette as much personally just because I have a lot of higher end luxury makeup that I want to get my money's worth out of, but if I didn't have the large collection that I do have, or if this had come just a few years earlier when I was like in high school, I would have murdered this palette. Every pan would be hit if this had come out a few years earlier for me. So this is a really good palette and the quality is very impressive, especially for the value. Now the worst palette from Morphe, and I know for a fact they've had worse palettes, but when I was taking a look at the palettes that I do have, I had to pull out the 3502. Now this isn't necessarily about quality because I was toying between this and the Jeffree Star collaboration, but I ultimately decided to go with this palette because it's 50 shades of brown. Literally, there's just like one shade in here. This could literally be turned into a quad. I could take four shades from here and I would still achieve the same looks of this whole palette. Though I do like the colors in here, that's why I purchased it. I've wasted my money because I just bought literally four shades of brown. Yeah, they just put all of the one shade in here. And Morphe has done this a lot, especially in their older palettes, and this is an older palette. But oh my gosh, I opened it and I was just like, why? this? Who put this together? This is horrible. And why did they think it was a good idea? Every single one of these shades kind of look the same. So that's why it's the worst in my opinion. Let's move to Charlotte Tilbury next. Now, I was hesitant to put Charlotte Tilbury in here because Charlotte Tilbury is next as far as my rankings videos go. However, this could change. Okay, I'm going through my collection currently and I am retrying every single palette and quad that I own from Charlotte Tilbury. But as of today, this is where these palettes rank as far as the best and worst. But that is subject to change as I'm retrying and replaying with the palettes. But the best palette from Charlotte Tilbury, in my opinion, is the Starry Eyes to Hypnotize palette. And reason being, this is a great Charlotte Tilbury formula. This is her great Charlotte Tilbury formula, I guess is how I should rephrase it. And the best part about this is you you get four different tones here. The thing with Charlotte Tilbury's line, as you guys know, is a lot of her tones are the same, so a lot of things can kind of look the same or have the same idea on the eye. So what I like about this palette is it's not all one tone. You get four different tones, so you really get the best of Charlotte Tilbury and every single tone that she offers in here. So that is why this is my favorite. The quality is like her regular great quality, but you just get a lot more color options in here. And the worst palette from Charlotte Tilbury, in my opinion, is this supersonic girl luxury palette of pops. I know some people really do love her pop formula. I hate her pop quads. I really do. I don't mind one of the pop shades in a palette or a quad, but all four, I just can't get down with it. These don't have enough of a pigmented base to justify all four being in here. They get hard pan. They get all over my face as well. I just don't like this formula that much to begin with, and so the fact that it's in a quad, it's just not worth the money. I also have a pillow talk version of this because I can't stop myself, and the pillow talk is bad too, but something about this was extra flaky on me. I just don't think this is worth the money. You can get so many better lid topper kind of formulas from other brands. I just... I don't like this one. So the rest are brands that I've already covered rankings wise, but there are a few things that I switched in and out. So be prepared. And then there's also some that I didn't. So we're gonna do Tom Ford, which was my most recent rankings. And this one did not change. So I'm gonna talk about it really, really quick. My favorite of course is Daydream, which thanks to you guys letting me know, it was restocked at Nordstrom and Macy's. Don't know if that is still the case, but this is just my favorite purple quad from Tom Ford, my favorite quad ever from Top Ford. The shadows in here are such good quality. They blend and I find the shades of these purples to be very unique. They're like blue based, lilac based, and silver based, which is not something that you find a lot from purple quads. So I just love this one so much. And by far the worst Tom Ford 
quad ever that I've tried is the Badass palette. Oh my gosh, this is just horrible. This does not feel like his regular formula at all. The shadows are sticky, they're patchy, they look different on the eyelid than they do in the pan. I just, I have a whole shot in my stash where I tried this and I did not have a good experience with it and it's just not a good one from him. I don't recommend it. Definitely not worth $88. I will tell you that. Fizzy Art. Now this I don't think was my top ranked palette from Fizzy Art, but it is the best in my opinion. I do love my Grande Pro Volume 1, but this one I love because of all the textures you get in here. So this is the Liaison palette, which I heard this was gonna restock in months down the road. I'm gonna message Fizzy Art and ask them because I'm not really sure if it will ever restock, but this is again another purple palette. I mean, I can't help myself. This is one of the best purple palettes ever to exist in my opinion as well. The shadows blend really smooth as far as the mattes go. The shimmers are very, very foiled and you get for just a nine pan palette a really great range as far as purples go. You get really great complementary mattes over here and you get so many different tones of purple and quality is spectacular. The color story is spectacular. They did a really great job with this nine pan. And the worst palette from this CR in my opinion, which this again is not even a bad palette. This is the Rosé Edit. And for me, this one was a bit dull, but it's really soft and pretty. That's kind of the idea behind it. So even me saying dull doesn't feel right because that feels negative. This is a soft palette. It just doesn't move me in other ways that other Viseart palettes do, but this is still a really great palette and I do recommend you pick it up just because it's their worst. Viseart can't do no wrong is what I'm trying to say. So that palette is still good. Let's talk about Huda Beauty. So the best palette that they've come out with, in my opinion, is the Desert Dusk palette. I love their big palettes to begin with, but I really like this one because I feel like there's a lot of variety in here. I mean, obviously this is a pretty pinpointed color story, so there's not a ton of variety, but based on the colors and the color stories, you do get a lot of different colors to work with that you can create different looks with. I love the textures in here, the undertones in here, just everything about this palette I am head over heels for. I don't know that this is like my favorite palette. All of the big palettes really are in a very close battle because I almost picked Mercury Retrograde for this, but really this is just such a good palette as far as wearability, color story, and textures, and just it's one of their best for sure. And then the worst one that I've tried, this is the neon, I think yellow or neon green from Huda Beauty. This was not worth the money at all. I really bought it because I wanted some neon shades last summer, but these shimmers are all lackluster. They don't have much pigmentation to them. You can't really get a lot of looks with this as well. I think the curation of colors is a bit odd. Quality is not there. This is just not, not a good palette from them. And they have so many good ones, but this one was not it. I'm so happy I passed on the pastels because I heard those were bad too, but this one is also like not good. They tried to hard with this one and they did not succeed. Let's move on to ABH. So I've been talking a lot about ABH it seems or mentioning ABH in my videos a lot. So I've made it pretty clear. Soft Glam and Sultry are the two best palettes in the ABH line. However, there's another one that is actually the best, but of course you can't get it. I'm talking about the Master Palette by Mario. This is like one of my favorite palettes that I don't get to talk about because it is limited edition and there's no way you can get your hands on it really anymore. But it's just these really muted tones that all blend together seamlessly. They just give you this really sultry, sexy kind of eye. Something about the formulation in here as well is just so good. This is such an easy palette to use. Unfortunately, it's starting to to get up there in age, which makes me very, very sad, but this is one of the best palettes all time to come out of ABH. Seriously, so good. The worst palette in my rankings, I think Subculture was the worst, but truly, like the longer I've had it, Prism has just dropped way to the bottom. At least with Subculture, I liked the color story. This palette is a bit scattered for me. I don't really like the colors that are in here, and the quality here is actually very good, and you can create beautiful looks with this. So even me saying it's the worst palette, I still like it. So don't get me wrong, this is a good palette. If I was doing palettes that I hadn't tried, the little ABH palettes, the, like, the little mini Norvina palettes, those would 
would be the worst, but I haven't tried those, so I want it to be fair. Maybe the quality in those is amazing. I mean, this one still has good quality, but doesn't inspire me. It's a bit of a random palette, and I need to declutter it, but it's still good quality shadows, so I can't. Pat McGrath, this is a repeat from my rankings video, but of course, the best palette ever is Bronze Seduction. I love this palette so much. There's something about the curation of colors in here that make it so easy to grab for. It inspires me. You can really do a lot of different looks with it because of the colors that she chose to pop in here, but it also is super wearable at the same time. I love this one. I'm skipping through it fast because I've said this in a billion and one videos. And then the worst palette from Pat McGrath is the Bronze Temptation. I just thought this one had some weird colors in here that weren't up to par to her quality. Now, don't get me wrong. When you look at this, you think you would like it. I think I would like it a lot. It's very neutral, wearable colors, but this red shade is just not good. It looks ugly on the eye, but that's really all I can say. And I'm just not really tempted to ever grab for this palette. I love my Pat McGrath palettes. I hold them up to such a high standard because she really comes out with the best palettes in the industry in my opinion and this one just didn't hit it for me the colors aren't very inspiring to me and I think they're kind of not pretty and <laughs> just something about this I don't really like as much as I love the others like I still like this that's the thing but I love the others and this one I don't love all right so now let's talk about the very last brand Natasha Denona her best palettes in my opinion are her 28 pan palettes. These are her original ones, the ones that got her brand started, and I wouldn't say these are my favorite from Natasha Denona. I love my gold palette, but really these are the best. I think formulation-wise, there's something really special about her original 28 palette. Now this one is pretty much untouched. I think I've used this like twice, but that's because I've had the green brown for a very long time. So I think it was for Black Friday. She had 50% off, so I picked up a fresh one. So that should tell you a little something. This, in my opinion, is the best palette. The purple blue one is also the best, but color story wise, this one I just tend to grab for more. And there's something really special about the formulation here that really is top notch, even in her own line. The formulation in here is just is just amazing. So the 28 green brown, I highly recommend. Okay, so let me just add that from this point on, for some reason, one of my eyelashes is just popping off one of my eyeballs it's a big pet peeve of mine and i almost refilmed this whole video because of that but let me stop but fair warning one of my eyelashes are popping off it happens to the best of us and the worst palette from natasha denona natasha denona has had some duds in her line so there actually was a feel that i pulled for this one <laughs> Ultimately, I'm deciding on these two. I'm counting them kind of as one because the problems within these palettes are kind of the same. These are the Mini Sunset and Mini Lila palettes. So these kind of started off her new, now very popular mini range, which is very good. But these two were a very rough start. I think she really did try to cut some corners with these guys and change her formulation to something that was cheaper and really rip you off. And these, you can tell, are not Natasha's formula at all. Now, don't get me wrong. You can make them work. They're fine but just because she spoiled us with such a beautiful formula before instantly these were not good and you could tell shimmer shades are lackluster they get hard pant and then the matte shades were difficult to work with especially on the Lila palette here it was tough these aren't bad palettes but for Natasha Denona they're bad they really are we have hit all of the brands the best and the worst I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always it was very very fun to do this challenge once again if you know of any any fun palette challenges make sure you comment them down below to let me know if you aren't subscribed to my channel I hope you guys take the time to do so and I will see you guys in the next video bye guys have a good one